All right, so here we have a T Motors F30 2800 kV motor. This one's a 1806 size motor, and this was donated by Edward Lee, one of uh, the YouTube viewers. He contacted me and uh, wanted to donate the motor so we can uh, put it through the test and see how it compares to the other motors that I've tested. So thanks, Ed, uh, for donating the motor. That was really nice of you. So it comes in this uh, usual box and they give you a nylock, some uh, mounted screws and uh, it's uh, quite nice. They give you two extra uh, circlips and a washer, uh, one of those uh, brass washers. So, so that's pretty nice from T-Motor. I think uh, more motor manufacturers should uh, include uh, at least one extra circlip and and definitely uh, one washer because a lot of times we end up loosening them or bending them you know uh, so that's a good idea these these are hard to find even if they charge an you know, extra 10 cents or whatever you know they should just include some extra ones so uh, pretty good front motor so this one as I said is a 1806 size and this one's the 2800 kV uh, so typical uh, T-Motor style, uh, they're using this format uh, in uh, their F line of motors. Uh, as you can see this one, this one has the uh, one piece hollow shaft and it's a uh, three millimeter through the motor. So pretty good. Uh, in the past most 1806s had a two millimeter shaft and that was really weak it would bend and uh, and crashes so, so it's good there it, it's three millimeters so I already took out the circlip uh, so we'll uh, we'll have a look at it on the magnifying glass but let's weigh it first let's see what it weighs uh, this comes with a hundred uh, millimeters worth of wire so I'll weigh it with the wire so that comes in at uh, uh, 22.6 with the included length of wire so not too bad uh, if you cut the wire it would be probably half a gram if you leave it like really short so it's probably around 22 20, 22 grams or so so let's have a look uh, on the magnifying glass okay so here it is as you can see uh, pretty pretty well made the armature is uh, pretty much standard the one piece shaft and the one thing I do have to criticize uh, T-Motor is uh, for using these uh, sticker labels for the motor uh, most everyone else uses laser etchings for the graphics and this sticker just eventually just it just starts to peel off and I can't help it think that it's gonna sort of unbalance the motor uh, it probably won't because it doesn't weigh that much, but you know, uh, it's kind of ugly. So, so that's one thing that should change. So, taking the motor apart is pretty easy. Uh, there you can see the one-piece shaft, pretty, pretty nicely finished, and the magnets. Uh, they look to be pretty well glued. Uh, plenty of glue right there, on the uh, on, almost like at the edge. But it should help uh, keep the magnets in place. So I, don't, I haven't heard of any magnets slipping on this uh, motor, so so that works. Uh, magnets are not that big; they're a normal size. They don't look like they're curved either, so look like pretty standard magnets. But as far as the windings, uh, pretty good. Uh, usually, T-Motor likes to use multi-strand wire. So that's what they're using here, and uh, the stator is supposed to be six millimeters. So let's uh, quickly kind of measure here as best we can. So yeah, looks like uh, six millimeters. No surprises there. So overall, pretty pretty well made motor and. Uh, a lot of attention to detail as you can see the uh, the motor 
wires they're located at the correct point uh, a lot of the in all the motors the wires are right right under the uh, the mounting hole so this one's right in between so there's no chance of uh, putting a screw through the through the wires there so so they're very well out of the way so that's pretty good uh, so overall pretty pretty well made motor uh, this I believe this uh, F series has been doing pretty well uh, as far as quality control uh, haven't heard much about issues I think they were having some issues with some motors at the very beginning and they sort of they sorted those out so so now they're they're pretty pretty solid so so okay uh, let's put it through the thrust test and see what it can do Alright, so let's look at the results for the thrust test on the T motor F30. This one's uh, 1806, 2800 kV, uh, but it did measure slightly higher at 2850 kV, so just a little bit higher. Uh, pretty typical for motors, they'll either be a little bit higher or lower, so that's not too bad. Extra 50 kV. I went ahead and also included the 4045 prop because uh, some people were asked ask me to test this one on the other 1806 so I thought I'd include it on this one don't know if that would be a good prop to match this motor it's probably too small for this motor uh, for what the motor can do you know it's kind of like under propping the motor but uh, but still uh, makes uh, plenty of thrust uh, 700 grams at uh, almost 18 amps so th still pretty reasonable but I think it's a uh, probably too small a prop if you're getting this motor you probably want to run uh, some three blade props uh, like the dal tj or the dal t4045 the t4045 close to 900 at uh, 25 amps uh, these are pretty manageable uh, remember that these are max amps so uh, uh, momentary max amps it's kind of like burst amps because that's what i use on the tables uh, from the maximum readings that I get on the thrust and that's what I put here but it's not uh, it's not what you'll see in the area in the area it's gonna be a lot less uh, probably around 35 percent lower amps uh, these uh, numbers I use here on my on the tables are momentary max so it's kind of like a burst and this only happened for a very uh, short time and the uh, uh, but that's you know that's what I've been using. So uh, the um, uh, the amps and the thrust will taper down as the motor uh, heats up, and the battery also the battery voltage sags. 
so in the air also you know there's gonna be a, a burst max for like a little bit and then and then it tapers down of course uh, so yeah these uh, amps are pretty manageable you know anytime you see 25 20 amps in real flight it's gonna be uh, quite a lot less uh, so this uh, this next one, the 4040 by 4, this prop is actually uh, it's really stressing the motor, I think, of this size and this KV. Uh, the additional blade, you know, on a four blade, that's creating a lot of drag and turbulence. Uh, the extra tip, so that kind of uh, draw makes it draw a lot more amps. You can see the huge difference between uh, between this three blade prop which uh, they have pretty much the same air airfoil, the same type of lathe, but the difference in amps is just uh, quite a lot, and actually the three blade is making more thrust than the four blade prop, uh, so that, that's telling us that uh, uh, the motor just can't handle this prop that well, uh, at high RPM that is. It just can't overcome the, the drag of that fourth blade. Uh, in actual flight, uh, these 4x4x4 four by four by four could, you know, it could actually work uh, if you're just kind of flying uh, at uh, the lower to mid RPM. Uh, it, it could, it, it'll work, uh, but uh, if you're constantly on it, like 100% throttle, it could end up overheating the motor. So that you gotta watch out for this prop uh, if you use it. Uh, check the motor temps. You know, you don't want to mess up your motor. On 3S, uh, it looks like it's a pretty viable solution for 3S use. Mm -hmm. As you can see, uh, plenty of thrust and uh, the amps are not too bad. So on 3S, it, it could very well work. Uh, so the 40, 40 by 3 is uh, a pretty good prop to use too. A uh, lot of thrust and the uh, amps are still kind of manageable. So uh, pretty good, uh, not too bad uh, on, on 3S. Then we move on to this uh, Lumineer 4040 by 3. This prop actually also puts uh, quite a lot of, you know, a little bit more s stress on the motor. So we can see the amps are uh, getting up there. You know, it's getting kind of high, almost uh, 34 amps. Uh, well, at least the uh, the thrust goes up a little bit. Uh, not too bad on the thrust compared to the the 4 by 4 by 4. But still, uh, also this prop, uh, you know, check the motor temps uh, if you're using this one. Uh, you know, you don't want to overheat the motor. Uh, on 3S, uh, also seems to work pretty well. On 3S, not too bad. Uh, but uh, in reality, actually, it looks like the 4x4x4 four by four by four would be a better choice on 3S almost. Uh, uh, the thrust is about the same. Uh, the, f the 4 blade prop, a little bit more amps, but uh, this one's going to have more thrust overall, you know, at the lower RPM, uh, throughout the rev band, uh, what people say call the area under the curve, <laughs> that that's gonna be it's gonna have more thrust overall. Uh, then we move on to the five-inch props. These uh, these are all kind of like gem fan clones: the uh, Dial J5030, the Diaton 5030, and even this HQ5040 derived uh, from the original Gen Fan 5030. Uh, so as we can see, uh, on the 5030, it seems seems to match pretty well with this motor, uh, one kilogram and and uh, 25 amps. So that's pretty manageable. So this 5030 prop uh, works pretty well for these high kV motors. It seems like uh, even on the 1407s, the really small motor is able to spin the prop uh, quite effectively. So that trend continues here on the larger motor. So seems to be pretty good. The gem fan, I think a lot of people don't like it because it flexes a lot. Uh, it's kind of flimsy, you know, so it'll flutter at high RPM or when you're on tight turns. Uh, it doesn't feel as steady, you know, it because the prop flexes, so it, it doesn't feel like it tracks very well. But uh, these other two props that I've been using, the J5030 and the Diaton 5030, uh, they're made out of the new, mo more uh, uh, the stiffer material so it doesn't flex as much so that's something you may want to try uh, the 5040 prop uh, still makes past one kilogram but as you can see the amps are getting up there so n this one's kind of a uh, uh, little bit over propping the motor uh, because of the pitch so these high kb motors they 
since they prefer the low pitch so that they're able to spin the props at, at high RPM, that's when they're happiest. Um, on 3S, uh, the 530 also still a very good uh, performance, 700 grams and pretty good amps, only 17, so pretty pretty efficient, I think. Uh, Gen Fan 5045, I know people use this one and they seem to like it, how it flies, uh, with the, even with the 1407 motor, I, I've heard people using it. Uh, so as we can see here, uh, it does get uh, pretty good uh, thrust, but uh, the the amps are also up there. So uh, you know you'd have to keep an eye on this uh, prop uh, for for the motor so it doesn't get too hot uh, on 3S. Also, not too bad. So that's another one to consider. So I also went ahead and I wanted to see what the 5040 by 3 would do, uh, but on 3S, of course, 4S it would just be way too much. So on 3S, uh, it seems to work okay, but probably won't feel that good in the air. You know, it probably the motor probably just can't can't handle the prop uh, a prop this big. It, it may feel a little bit unresponsive. It'll work. I mean, it'll fly and all that, but uh, there's there's better solutions for that. You know, there's better matchups. Uh, a slightly bigger motor, maybe a 2204 or a very light 2205 would be a better match. Uh, but I, you know, I tested it just to see what it would do. So th there's the numbers. So pretty close uh, numbers to the other 1806 uh, 2850 motor I tested. Uh, the one from Brother Hobby, the R4. Uh, if you compare the tables, uh, you'll see that the motors are pretty pretty close in performance uh, though the R4 uh, from Brother Hobby did uh, slightly better on on pretty much across the board I think the uh, Brother Hobby did a little better so you can you can just go ahead and view that uh, that video or get the thrust tables and uh, do the comparison you'll see that they're very close uh, but the Brother Hobby came came ahead uh, by a little bit uh, it it I think it did uh, it had better thrust all around and also I think it was a little bit more efficient than this one uh, the amps on that motor were slightly better compared to this one if I'm not mistaken but uh, yeah go ahead and, and compare it uh, it's a good comparison to make uh, if you you know I if you're thinking about getting uh, into these size motors you can you can see for yourself uh, which one's the top motor although both both motors uh, seem to be pretty pretty good choices uh, so okay, that's uh, the results for the thrust test on this motor. Uh, hope you find the data useful and uh, thanks for watching.